Apple and Google are teaming up to work on technology to help reduce the spread of coronavirus. The COVID-19 tracing technology will use Bluetooth to help notify someone if they've been in contact with someone who's infected. The two companies plan to actually roll out this technology on their operating system next month. Nick Thompson joins me now. He's a CBS News contributor and editor-in-chief of Wired. So Nick, tell me, how is this going to work? It's pretty complicated, but also pretty interesting. You'll have an app that you install on your phone, either Android or iPhone, and it will track what phones you've been near. And then if somebody tests positive for coronavirus, they will upload their information to the cloud. And if you've been near them, you'll get an alert. So if you've been within roughly 30 feet for five consecutive minutes, you'll get an alert saying someone you've been near has tested positive for COVID-19. You won't know who, you won't know where it was, but you can still then take action. Nick, so much about the transmission is also about these people who are asymptomatic. They just don't have the signs. Would this also track those people as well? Only if they got a test. If you're asymptomatic and you don't get a test, you don't know that you've ever been positive, then no. But if there ends up being a period where we have mandatory testing or testing becomes so easy and we all just get tested every two weeks, then even somebody who's asymptomatic and tests positive could have that information uploaded and then everybody they've been near would get an alert and that would be a very helpful service. Mm, testing, it always comes back to testing as I keep hearing over and over again. Nick, I'm curious also when you talk about technology, what are the privacy concerns when you're weaving in a health epidemic like this? I mean, they're massive. And so the most interesting thing that happened is Apple and Google had to make a choice about how they would collect this data. They could have used GPS information. They could have used Bluetooth information. They chose Bluetooth. And the advantage of Bluetooth is that it doesn't know where you are. It doesn't track your movements at all times. And that is very good for privacy because it means there's no central database that someone can access that shows where you've been at all moments. It just shows that you've been near someone who's tested positive for coronavirus. The second good thing is that for most people, those who haven't tested positive, the only data that exists is stored on their phone. It's not stored in the cloud. So that's another level of protection. So this is a system that was built to maximize privacy, but A, it's not collecting as much information as it could, and B, the privacy protections aren't perfect. There are still vulnerabilities and risks. Can you think, Nick, of an instance where technology has been used in this capacity for something like this? Oh, it's being used in very similar ways in Asia. I mean, Singapore has a system much like this, Taiwan, China. There are many other countries that have governments that are more willing to give direct orders to people, people who are more willing to use technology for this purpose, where this is in place. It just has to be put in place in a Western democracy where we don't like taking orders, we're really concerned about privacy, but these are unprecedented times and people are willing to make trade-offs they would never have made before. That's such a great point, willing to make trade-offs that they weren't willing to make before. Nick Thompson, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me here.